we're in the seventh chapter. We're going to be uh, starting here at the 36th verse. Now, uh, today's sermon, uh, much of it may seem to uh, be more uh, teaching uh, than preaching. Uh, as I have uh, mentioned, that we would get down to some doctrinal specifics uh, concerning uh, marriage and uh, divorce and, and remarriage. And uh, 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 we don't have any private agenda in this. Uh, we want to say just as much about it as the Bible does. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, so we have come to this uh, in the uh, book of Corinthians. Now, uh, I, I hope that does not sound like a form of, of an apology. Uh, we should never apologize for declaring the whole counsel of God. Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 7 reading verses 36 uh, through 38. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age and uh, need uh, so require, let him do what he will. Uh, he said, if not, uh, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but have power over his will and have so decreed in his heart that he will uh, keep his virgin doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Now I think it's obvious that verse 38 uh, is referring to uh, the father uh, of the virgin. Now, verses 36 and 37 is not necessarily quite as clear. Uh, some believe that all three of these verses uh, are referring to the Father. Uh, I'm inclined that the first two verses uh, are actually uh, uh, referring to uh, uh, the uh, virgin's uh, uh, fiancé, uh, or these who are uh, considering uh, marriage. And uh, so, uh, uh, if a young man, uh, if he uh, thinks that he's behaving himself uncommonly toward uh, his uh, uh, virgin, it's no sin for them uh, to marry. And again, if they keep themselves pure, it is not a sin to remain single. And I, I mentioned in an earlier sermon uh, how this chapter uh, addresses uh, everyone in regard to uh, marriage or, or being saint. Uh, it, it addresses uh, uh, those who have uh, never uh, been married. Uh, it addresses those who desire to remain single, those who desire to marry, uh, those who have married, those who have married and divorced, and it addresses the widows and the widows. widows. So Paul covers the, the whole uh, gamut uh, to where it would include everybody that's here today. Uh, Paul addresses uh, your situation uh, in this chapter. But in uh, these particular verses, uh, uh, here, uh, the young man, the young lady, uh, should they marry? And he uh, says here, as he had said in another verse, uh, it's better to marry uh, than uh, to burn. And uh, so uh, here, uh, verse 37 said, He that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but have power over his will and have sold the creed, the creed in his heart that he will uh, uh, keep his uh, virgin uh, doeth uh, well. So depending on the circumstances, it's good for him to marry. In other circumstances, uh, he's still doing well if he does not uh, marry. Verse 38, referring to the father. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not 
in marriage uh, doeth uh, better. Now, uh, today we're going to be uh, saying quite a bit about uh, divorce uh, and remarriage. And statistics show that 41% of first marriages end in divorce. 60% of second marriages end in divorce. And 73% of third marriages end in divorce. Now, uh, that's sad, uh, that's, that's bad, that's bad news. Uh, but on uh, the, the other side, as we recognize the Bible teaching that if people are in an unbiblical marriage, that, that is not pleasing to God. And they need to come out of that in order to be right with God. These statistics, I, I believe one thing they say, say to us is don't give up on people who are in a marriage that God does not recognize, who are divorced and remarried. Because it's a higher percentage of them divorcing that second person or third person than it is the first one. So uh, we don't want to just strike our people, uh, strike people off of our list in the sense of giving up on them, as though they could ever uh, do uh, whatever was necessary uh, to be right with God. If people can't divorce for all the wrong reasons, like burning the biscuits, uh, then how much faith does it take to believe that they could possibly uh, do the same uh, if if they're in uh, a wrongful? Uh, marriage. In the United States, a uh, divorce, uh, there's 100 divorces that take place every hour. That's one in every 36 seconds. 2,400 a day. 16,800 in a week. In the United States, 16,800 divorces take place in a week. 876,000 in a year. All of this in spite of the fact that uh, the next verses tell us here, verses 39 and 40, that the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. Amen. That's right. Now what could be more simple? The Bible clearly teaches one man for one woman and you'll see that a lot uh, all over the internet, but they leave this last part I'm going to mention uh, all. Yeah. In other words, they, they don't believe in bigamy. <laughs> one man for one woman, but let's go a little further. One man for one woman for life. The woman is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty. Doesn't say she has to remarry. But she is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Uh, only uh, him or the Lord. Amen. Now when it says she can marry whoever she wills. That don't mean that she can marry uh, uh, some other woman's husband. Amen. <laughs> That other woman, her husband, were ever truly married in the eyes of God, they would remain married until they die. Yeah. So if your companion dies, you're at liberty to remarry whoever you will in the Lord. Not just any and everybody, it doesn't mean that you can marry somebody else's companion. Uh, uh, but in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. And I think also uh, that I have uh, the Spirit of God. So uh, uh, Paul, he has his opinion on some things. But he's very careful to make clear what is his opinion and what is the very law of God. And he gives his reasons as to why... Uh, uh, he believes that it's preferable uh, to be single. And it's not a sin to remain single all your life. 
Let me tell you, you can, and this is an important part of this marriage, uh, uh, of this message, you can remain single and still the grace of God enable you to keep yourself pure. Yes. Amen. That applies to those who have never been married. That applies to those who also who come out of a marriage that is not pleasing to God. Somebody says, well, you mean I, I got to live uh, uh, the rest of my life alone? The Apostle Paul did. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not fair. The grace of God is sufficient yeah. to enable you to keep yourself pure no matter how long uh, that you are single. And of course, certainly, that goes for the married and everybody else. Amen. The grace of God can enable you to keep yourself pure. Romans chapter 7 expresses this in a very similar uh, manner. Verses 2 and 3. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as she liveth. So it said it again. Same thing, 1 Corinthians 7 39, as in Romans 7 and 2. How many times does God have to say a thing for it to be true? But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Mm -hmm. The command of the apostle of God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, is to call that man or woman an adulteress. Yeah. Said she shall be called an, an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress. <coughs> Though she be married to another man. Now I want to, to digress here from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 7 and uh, dwell some on what comes to people's minds when you are approaching this subject, and, and that is the uh, except it be for fornication clause. Matthew uh, chapter 19, verse 9. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which if is put away, doth commit adultery. So there is an exception here given uh, for divorce uh, and remarriage in Matthew 19 and 9. But, let's look at, and also in Matthew 5 and 32, where Jesus said, But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her, that is divorced, committeth adultery. The reason that Jesus said not to put away our companions, not to divorce. Did you know Jesus said that? It's because divorce opens up the door uh, to uh, remarriage. But let's see what Mark and Luke say, say about this. Mark chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. And he saith unto them, Whosoever, now listen closely, I want you to see if you hear any exception in Mark and Luke. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. Mark did not give any exception. Amen. 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 Well, let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 16, verse 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife and beareth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. 
Luke did not give any exception. But according to Mark and Luke, there is no exception. But according to Matthew, there is an exception. So what do we have here? Of course, uh, the critics of, of Christianity and the truth of the Word of God will say, see, there's a contradiction. But the fact is, if it is a true marriage in the eyes of God, there is no exception. Amen. He that puts away his wife and bareth another commits adultery. Therefore, the exception in Matthew uh, would have to do with a marriage that God does not recognize that was never a true marriage to start with because according to Mark and Luke, if it were a true marriage, there would be uh, no exception. Let's look closer at Matthew chapter 19. Beginning verse 3. And if you would turn in your Bibles there, we'll, we'll be there a while. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? <clears throat> now I want you to notice here that the discussion that ensues here, beginning with verse uh, uh, 3, and going on through verse 9, and I believe even following uh, that, is about divorce. That's what started the conversation, was this question, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read? Uh, 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 my. You've heard everybody else's opinion. But don't, don't you have a Bible? <laughs> How many has ever read the Bible? Now I tell you, if you're just going to go uh, by man's opinion, or anybody that has uh, uh, the prefix uh, uh, pastor or reverend or, or priest uh, in front of their name, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a string of alphabet letters of following their name. That's one thing. But that's not the determining factor. Amen. Have you not read? Amen. I say to you, the authority on this is not uh, just what I think. Or in the context that I'm saying, it, it's not just what the church thinks. Amen. It comes down to have you read That's it. what saith the word of God. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. He made one man and one woman. He did make several women for Adam. Right. Amen. That was not his plan. That was not his intention. That's right. God's plan from the beginning was one man for one woman. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God saw Adam and said it's not good for a man to be alone. Mm -hmm. So God made a whole bunch of women. <laughs> And he said, you choose one of them. And if that don't work out, then you've got others to choose from. No, 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 no. I tell you, uh, if, if there would have occurred a separation from Adam and Eve, God didn't make anybody else for Adam to choose. That's right. Was it Vestal Goodman that says, don't, don't get angry with me. I'm just telling you what the book said. <laughs> Have you not read? 
And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And they'll be one flesh as long as they live. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Those words will be true if the conversation had ended there, if Jesus had never said anything about remarriage. Those words would still be true. Amen. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Well, what God joined together, let not man put asunder unless that they have a commitment in their heart to not remarry. Is that what the Bible said? No. This talking about divorce here. So, but the, the Bible said, well, therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Still hadn't approached the subject of remarriage. Still talking about divorce. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. Well, what Jesus was talking about was from the, from the beginning, it was not all right to remarry. No. He said from the beginning, it was not all right to put them away. Amen. Look, look, look at your Bible. Uh, see, see, see what the Bible says. When he said from the beginning, it was not so, he was talking about divorce. That's right. And then, yes, he added this. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commit adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away, committed adultery. <clears throat> Let's take a, word, a closer look at this word adultery as it is used in Scripture. John chapter 8, verse 4. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery the very act. In that verse, in, in talking about adultery, uh, it's talking about a, a physical, a immoral, a, a sex act. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman unto lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Here, uh, it, it is not an immoral sex act, but it's lust in the heart that is called adultery. In Matthew 19, it is not referring to to either of those uses of the word. It is not referring to a, a, a physical, immoral sex act. It is not referring to lusting after someone in your heart. It is referring to putting away your wife and marrying another. In Matthew 19, in this conversation, Jesus is referring to sins that can only be committed where divorce comes into the picture. That's what he is discussing, is divorce. The way he uses adultery in this passage that does, uh, that does, does not apply 
to, uh, to raping someone or to having uh, a sex uh, with someone outside uh, uh, of the boundaries uh, uh, of, of Scripture. It's not referring to those kinds of sins, but it's referring to sins that the divorce opened up the door to. That's what the whole conversation is about. It's divorce and the possible of the, the divorce, the, the consequences of the divorce or the possible consequences. And even so, as it is with the word adultery, that sin in this passage, even so it is with the word fornication. There is, a, a, there can be a physical, sexual, uh, immoral act, sexual immorality that is fornication. But Jesus uh, here was not referring to just any and every kind of fornication. He was referring to a sin of fornication that could not occur unless somebody had divorced somebody. Are you with me? Amen. That's what this passage uh, is, is all about. Uh, Brother Chris, I have a handout here. And it will only take me about four minutes to, uh, to read this, so I, I think I'll read it. And this is taken from the 1980 Assembly Minutes, M.A. Thompson's annual address. In a section called, Except It Be For Fornication. He begins by reading from Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 through 9, which we've already read. And he says this, The scripture is plain in its teaching of a man and a woman becoming uh, uh, one flesh when they are joined together in holy matrimony. This is a union which only death can sever. Although Jesus said, Wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh, and what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. This has not kept man from using the instrument of the divorce to attempt to dissolve the divine union of marriage. Thus, the divorce and remarriage problem has been a subject that the church groups have wrestled with for centuries. It is a subject which was discussed by the assembly for many years before a satisfactory decision was reached. And our present teaching on this subject was added to the teachings made prominent in the 22nd Assembly in 1927. It was five years earlier in the 17th century, in the 17th Assembly in 1922, that the general overseer had given a lengthy treatment of this subject in his annual address which seemed to satisfy the church in its search for the Bible answer to this perplexing problem. The phrase, except it be for fornication, was part of Christ's statement that was most difficult to understand. A.J. Thompson showed that a person who had never been married to marry a divorced person, he was simply joining himself to another person's companion. This he called fornication. Since this was a sinful arrangement, it was proper for him to put away that other person's companion. And inasmuch as he had never really had a true marriage partner of his own, he then would have the privilege of taking one in a marriage that God would sanction. He and the other person's companion, though joined together by civil law, had never become one flesh because such a union was in violation of God's law for the marriage. They were, in fact, guilty of fornication. People might recognize them as being husband and wife, but God would not. The general overseer, after explaining such a condition, said, why can we not all agree that, that the fornication, notice that, 
Why can we not all agree that the fornication, that, don't leave out the word the, can we not all agree that the fornication that permits a man to put away his wife and marry another is where a man has another man's wife or a woman has another woman's husband. This explanation has stood the test of time for more than 60 years now, and we believe this to be the correct interpretation of the phrase, except it be for fornication, Matthew 19 and 9. This definition satisfied the church so well that after his explanation of fornication has been repeated time after time in our pulpits and in our church literature throughout the years. In fact, we seem to have lost sight of the former general overseer's restrictive definition of the word when he explained this to be the fornication which allows for remarriage. Notice this. The implication was clear in his statement that there are other uses of the word fornication in the Bible which do not relate to one having another person's companion, uses which do not justify the putting away of a companion to marry another. For example, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10 and 8, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and failed in one day, three and twenty thousand. This obviously is a reference to the account described in Numbers chapter 25, which says, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. The scripture goes on, uh, that's uh, in chapter 4, verse 11. The scripture goes on to tell about the destructive plague which God sent. They killed this great number of Israelites to which Paul referred. All fornication is wrong. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen being listed as a work of the flesh and com compare Galatians 5 and 19. But not all fornication is permissible as grounds for divorce and remarriage. The position of the church, of which was set forth in 1922 and adop adopted officially in 1927, it states the fornication that permits a man to put away his wife and marry another is that where a man has another's wife or a woman has another a woman's husband. Mm -hmm. The explanation being given in this section of this address in no way alters the church's stand against the divorce and remarriage evil. God's word for marriage is one woman for one man for life. Mm -hmm. Only death can dissolve a true marriage. I am simply calling attention our attention to the official position taken on the explanation of fornication in the 22nd assembly. We should be aware that this word fornication has more than one application, but the fornication which allows for remarriage exists where a person is married to another person's companion. This is the biblical stand on marriage which can be taught without scriptural contradiction. Marriage is set forth in the book of Genesis is as follows. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Jesus reiterated this when he said, Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Matthew 19 and 6. The voices are used in publicly and officially putting away someone else's companion to whom without divine sex, sanction a person may have married. This would be a part of fleeing fornication. A divorce is not something, however, to be used in putting away one's companion in an attempt to end a violent marriage. A marriage can be ended only by death. I'm going to ask my wife Alice uh, to come up here. And you can ask her how long we've been married. 
<laughs> it's been since 1969. Oh, wow. 40 something years. I don't think it's been out. But it's 45, 46 years, something like that. And uh, we've got an anniversary coming up uh, November the 19th. Uh, almost here. I'm not the easiest person to live with. <laughs> now, when we got married, neither of us had ever been married before. So, we got married, God considered us one flesh. God joined us together. What God had joined together, let not man uh, put asunder. But she gets fed up with me being so uh, hard uh, uh, to live with. <laughs> and uh, let, let, let me see. I believe I'll get a single man. Andrew, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> so here it comes along, dark, tall, and handsome. <laughs> and she goes with him. <laughs> She is still my wife until the day, the day we die. Now don't hug her too close. <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there, he's a single man. In the eyes of God, even though the civil law says he's married to her, in, in the eyes of God, they are not married. Amen. She is still my wife. That's right. Now, so, Andrew, he gets into conviction. He gets saved. And he says, oh, hallelujah, God's forgive me of my sins. And I'll, I'll never commit that sin again. I'll never make that mistake again. Well, what if... Somebody stop that clock. <laughs> Remember David and Bathsheba. Yes. The prophet Nathan said there was a rich man, he had lots of sheep. Uh -huh. But here was this poor man, had one little sheep. He took the poor man's sheep. And the King David got all upset. Who did such a terrible thing? Nathan said, Thou art the man. Now, what would it take to make that right? In the grace dispensation. Is he going to keep that sheep? If the sheep's still alive, is it not obvious? He should give that sheep back. He should say, it is not mine. Or should he say, God's forgiven me. It's my sheep. And for that poor man, too bad, too sad. In order to be right with God, he cannot continue to sleep with my wife. <laughs> he's a single man. In the eyes of God, he's never been married. Not only can he put her away, he must put her away to be right with God. Yes. But now, since he's never been married, he is free to marry well, I don't know if you had another choose. Uh, well, she, you feel like coming up here? Well, <laughs> uh, go, go back there and at least touch her on the shoulder. Oh, yeah, okay. oh, we're, we're getting on this. We're so Okay. Right. They, they are both same. So he is free to marry her. Now, if she had put me away and she had married, she, she marries another, she is committing adultery. But he didn't put away his wife and marry another. He married somebody else's wife. 
That's the fornication that Jesus was talking about is when a single person marries a divorcee. Yes. Yes. And he that puts away his wife and marries another, except it be for fornication, commits adultery. But he did this because he was in a state of fornication. That's right. That came about by marrying, uh, as a single person, marrying a divorced person. Yeah. So if he puts her away and marries another, he is not committing adultery. Amen. Amen. And that is the exception that Jesus gave. Yes. You make anything else out of it, you are saying that the words of Mark and Luke are not true. That's right. Because Mark and Luke did not give an, an exception. They said, He that bareth another and put away his wife committed adultery. No exception. If it's a true marriage, there is no exception. Yes. Amen. You right. may be seen. <laughs> All right, now, uh, Andrew, Christine, I did not pronounce you bad and wise. <laughs> now, there are two common objections that are often heard about what I just said. One is, you mean, now when she left me and she married Andrew, I'm the innocent party. But I'm still married to her till the day she dies. Yes. The Bible does not give me the right to go and marry someone else. Right. So some object. They say, well, well that, that's, that, that's not fair uh, uh, to, to Brother Ammons to have to live uh, the rest of his life alone. Other Objection. Some may say, well, there's little children in, in the home. And you're talking about a, a, a busting up, 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 up a home. Alice and Andrew, they, they have children. And you're saying that they've got to separate. I believe the following verses, after verse 9, addresses both of those situations. Let's see what it says. Matthew chapter 9, beginning verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever beareth her that is put away, doth commit adultery. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with the wife, it is good, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, Say they to whom it is given, for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know in the natural uh, 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 castration. Uh, comes uh, uh, in, uh, into these. But we are talking almost in a sense, a, a, uh, if you've got a better term, please tell me and I'll use it next time. I'm not the remarried. I'm an innocent party. My wife left me, she married someone else. I am to be a spiritual eunuch. Amen. Jesus said that in the same conversation. Yes. Back to back verses. But God can give me grace. And there are those who can give a testimony of how God has given them grace. Even as with a, a single person who has never been married, uh, God can give this a divorcee, a, a grace to keep himself pure, and the, uh, even though he is single, uh, even if it mean, meant for the rest of my life. So Jesus addressed this. And it said, He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. And notice verse 13. Then 
were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. Well, my Jesus must not have lived, loved little children very much. When he's telling couples they're not really married, and that means that that home is going to be busted up and those children suffer. Let me tell you, Jesus proclaimed the truth and he still loved children. Yes. 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 But again, back to back verses, same conversation. There were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them, but Jesus said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, if everyone accepted what they could read in this book, what the Bible teaches, what the church of God teaches, what John the Baptist had his head cut off for, there would be no broken home. Amen. There would be no divorces. Amen. There would be no children without parents. If everyone would simply accept what this book says. Amen. 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 About one man from one woman a far uh, of life. Amen. All right. Uh, I, I want to uh, uh, finish this up. So I believe I'll just read going back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7. 